Hi, my name is Joe Hinkle. This training video is one that I missed. It is hopefully will fill a big hole when it comes to how to configure the Hinx Pix Pro for smart receivers. This video will be specifically on configuring the four port spy smart receiver. There's another video that I'm also going to release today which will be on the 16 port spy. The hole that I found that I had in my training was how do you configure or stack or organize the data that goes out to particular smart receiver ports so that they actually agree and you illuminate the display items that you want to illuminate. So first off, you need to make sure that you update your Hinks Pix Pro. Either plug it into a uh, internet connection or use my HSA program uh, which can put the latest firmware on a micro SD card and then you can put the micro SD card in the controller and it'll update itself. The key thing is you want to be on web version 64 which is I'm on the status tab so web version 64. So let's begin the training. We're going to start off effectively with a vanilla controller, which will come up as 16 universes at 150 uh, channels per universe. So that's 50 pixels. Now, I'm doing things a little non-standard. I find that when everything is basically standardized, some people come to believe that some of the correlation between universe numbers and other things have to be that way. So this particular video, if you've noticed, I've started my universe numbering at 20, not at 1, so that you can try to get an understanding of, of what you need to do. Okay. Now, just to go over very quickly, these two columns, universe number and channel per universe. These tell the controller what E131 packets to look for that your sequencing program, whether it's LOR, or whether it's X-Lights, or whether it's Vixen or whatever, is going to be transmitting. When the controller sees a specific universe number, it looks in the placement order, and it places in memory this is how it's placed in memory, which seems a little technical, but you need to understand that when this data is placed in memory in this organization, these channel start numbers are what's important when we get into configuring. Okay? So let's go, and for this assumption, we're going to go, we have a long range uh, transmitter here which has got four Cat5 cables. Um, I'm going to suggest you grab a piece of paper and a pen and just take some notes. I'll tell you what to write down. The reason is um, normally, if you notice here, we have ports one, two, three, and four. So if you were just hooking a dumb long range connector, anything coming down this particular twisted pair. These are actually four twisted pairs in the Cat5 cable. Uh, they're going to port one. So they're labeled port one, two, three, and four. And that's what's labeled on the uh, dumb uh, long range receiver. When you get into smart receivers, there's more than just that coming down. So for this example, I want you to think that you've got eight leaping arches. We got a group of four leaping arches and 200 feet away we have another group of four leaping arches. So in our display we want one smart receiver that's got four ports. Now my definition of a port is very specifically where a pixel string connects effectively to that green Euro connector that's on the board. So it's a physical string to controller
connection. That's what I deem a port. So on one smart receiver, we're going to use two of them, we are going to drive four of the um, leaping arches, and then we're going to put another Cat5 cable coming off of that smart receiver and have it go to the second one 200 feet away, and that's going to drive the next four leaping arches. Okay? So the first thing we want to do is we're going to bring up, we're going to press the, the plus twice, so we got two smart receivers here. And if you notice, one of the things that changed now, this is what is part of the new uh, web change I changed, the header changed from the word port to the word stream. Because port is no longer really indicative of what's happening. It's more of a stream of data, as you'll see in a minute. So here's our first smart receiver. There are four ports that are labeled one, two, three, and four. On your piece of paper, I want you to put on port one, our first leaping arch is going to be universe 22. Our second arch, which is going to be at port 2, is going to be universe 23. That's 50 pixels being transmitted on with universe 23. The third leaping arch is going to be universe 24, and the fourth one is going to be 25. Now, 200 feet away, we're going to have our next set of leaping arches. On port 1, that leaping arch, we've told let's say our sequencer, whether it be X lights, that that's going to be universe 26. The second, the, the one connected to port 2 is universe 27, 3 is 28, and 4 is 29. Now, I hopefully you wrote those down because here comes the first chance for a light bulb moment. The data that is coming on this port on port one of the very first smart receiver is, is running in front of the data for port one on the second receiver. So for a data stream, now remember I talked here about data stream. This one here, the data coming on stream one is available to this port one and this port one. Well, remember, this port one was universe 22, and this universe one was port 26. So we have 50 pixels on this. We have 50 pixels there. So in total, we have 100 pixels on this stream. So now we go to arch 2. This is universe 23. It is on the same stream as this one, which is 27. So we have the data for 50 pixels on 27 here. We have the data for 50 pixels on universe 23, and that's all coming on this stream. So this stream is 100. Hopefully a light bulb is starting to fire off. And the same is going to hold true with this. This is going to be universe 24. Following that is got to be universe 28 because they're on the same stream. So that's 100. And this one will be 100. So let's just do an auto calc. Now, it's important to realize, what did I say? Look at your notes. What is composed on stream one? The first set of data coming off of stream one is going here, and that is universe 22. So we're going to start pulling off pixel one. Well, after the first 50 pixels are pulled off, then we have the data on the same stream running right in back of that, for universe 26, which happens to be pixel 51. So 
they're all the same. This will be 1, 1, 1. This will be 51. This will be 51. This will be 51. Again, light bulb moment. What I'm trying to convey is universe 22 has the first 50 pixels running down this stream. Following that, on the same stream, are the 50 pixels associated with universe 26. So this 50 and this 50 give you 100 pixels that are running on this stream. Let's save that. That's important. Oh, thank you. Let's make this, oh, let's just make it 2 and 3. How's that? Not 0 and 1. There we go. Now we're going to save. So what we're going to do now is we're going to jump back over here because there's a couple things I want to show you. So now our job here is to make sure that those universes are sequential here. So the first thing we said was universe 22, which is 150 ch channels or 50 pixels. What needed to immediately follow 22? Look at your notes. Pause. Light bulb moment. Remember. What are the two universes that were on stream one? Universe 22 followed by universe 26. This needs to be 26. Then we went to the second stream, which was universe 23 followed by universe 27. Then we had universe 24 followed by universe 28. Then we had universe 25, followed by 29. So now, if you look, we have 22, which starts at 301, ends at 450. Immediately following that in this memory map is universe 26. So we now have the data for universe 22 immediately preceding the universe data 26. The same for 23 and 27. Let's save that. Now there's one more light bulb to go off. If you notice, we started over on universe 22. Well, where is 22 in this memory map? It's actually position 301. So we have one last thing to do to properly configure these two smart receivers. So we need, remember, 301 is the beginning of universe 22. So we need to come back to long range. And I did this purposely. See, this said automatically it starts at channel 1. Well, in our case, it doesn't. It starts at channel 301. Do that. Do an auto calc. And now everything is properly configured. We can save that. Now, if you notice, universe stream 1 consists of data here, which was universe 22, immediately followed by data for universe 26. So cha uh, channels 301 to 600 were 22 and 26 that were coming down this twisted pair, coming out that port and that port at pixel position 1, at pixel position 51. Let's just double check. 301 to 600. So we can come back here. Twenty two. Three oh one to six hundred. Six hundred is the end of twenty six, and three oh one is the start of twenty two. So we have the two data packets properly positioned in memory so that they go out the output stream. I know this is very technical, 
I hopefully you took some notes on paper and pen. Uh, don't be surprised if you need to go through this video multiple times. That light bulb will go off. And when it comes on, you'll say, oh my goodness, I understand it. It's pretty simple. But until that light bulb goes on, uh, it can be a little frustrating. That's going to conclude this video on the four port smart spy receiver board. Please look at the video on the smart 16. It actually contains four of these uh, smart four receivers and how they're programmed. Have a nice day and have a great holiday. Bye.